Well, it's been a pretty wild ride at Nintendo this week. We've had a lot of really big things happen, and that includes actually the Game Awards. Nintendo showed out at the Game Awards, but I'm not here to really talk about that today. I mean, there was three things shown off by Nintendo, including a brand new game announcement, brand new DLC for a yet-to-be-released game, and the Mario movie. So that's really fun, and Nintendo did walk away with five awards, actually. They weren't even nominated for that many awards, but they essentially walked away with every single award they were nominated for. Well, besides the Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which ended up getting blanked, even though it was up for three awards. But what are you going to do? You can't win them all. That being said, there was another piece of news that was announced this week about a 10-year deal between Microsoft and Nintendo for Call of Duty that would not kick in until the sales are finalized. So basically, once Activision Blizzard King becomes part of Microsoft, from that point moving forward, there would be a 10-year commitment to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo Switch pretty much every single year. Or if not Nintendo Switch, Nintendo's future platforms. To be clear, they didn't specify Switch, they just said Nintendo platforms. So that would obviously include whatever Nintendo has coming next. Now what's interesting about this is obviously the FTC has filed a lawsuit against Microsoft. Microsoft's gonna fight it in court. We're not really gonna go over that stuff too much here, but that's the current state of things. Highly likely if this sale gets approved by a judge, it probably won't go through until sometime in 2024 just because of the legal process, which means the first time we could see a Call of Duty on a Nintendo platform would be, well, of lately anyways, would be in 2024, if not 2025. And at that point, we're obviously looking at this entire deal taking place mostly on Nintendo's next platform and maybe even the one after that. That being said, there is a certain company out there that can't seem to let this go, and that is Sony. Sony over the years has basically said a lot of disparaging things about their competition. They don't seem to play as nice as Xbox and Nintendo do. Xbox and Nintendo are very publicly friendly with each other and pretty friendly with each other behind the scenes as well, as we see with this deal and the Better Together update with Minecraft and so much more. But Sony operates differently. And the thing is, sometimes you think it's just about console wars and riling up the fans and trying to, you know, gather the troops together to go out and buy Sony products. So in some cases, you can understand why maybe they make public comments that are disparaging against other companies because they're just trying to drive fan support to their side. Again, we saw this in the past. Nintendo isn't always innocent, man. Nintendo and Sega went at each other's throats. Obviously, there was a massive fallout between Sony and Nintendo way back in the day as well that led to PlayStation. But the thing is, this isn't about public comments. We have a leaked email, a reportedly leaked email, internal email about Nintendo from this week. It, it, it's literally after the deal was announced with Microsoft, a leaked internal email from Sony's headquarters. And this email has now been shared on multiple places. We're actually going to get this one off xboxera.com. And this email does nothing but attack Nintendo and I don't really understand why. Let's read it. Microsoft's Call of Duty deal with Nintendo is misleading. Activision Blizzard could supply Call of Duty to Nintendo today, but doesn't because Nintendo's younger audience is not interested in first-person shooter and a previous version of the game on its console was a commercial flop. Instead of being a logical business decision, the licensing agreement is a tactic designed to make Microsoft look cooperative with regulators. Furthermore, Nintendo Switch could not run Call of Duty easily and may never be able to. Developing a version of the game compatible with Switch could take years, making a 10-year licensing deal meaningless. It is easier for Nintendo to enter into such an agreement because Nintendo doesn't need to worry about equal treatment for its subscription service or cloud gaming service as those are not areas where it currently competes aggressively. Now what's interesting about this remark is first off, saying that their audience is younger goes directly against Nintendo's own supply graph. Here he goes from the most recent financial report. As you can see, the age distribution of the people playing Switch massively swings to adults. So that doesn't really make sense. Also, I dare any of you to go and play Call of Duty right now, and instead of playing with your friends, go into the public lobby. Tell me how many people you're hearing in that public lobby that sound like kids. Let's just be realistic. A lot of people that play Call of Duty are kids. But you can't 
make that argument, of course, because it's a rated M game. So you can't admit that a lot of the people playing the game are kids. Uh, so you have to try to argue that kids aren't allowed to play the game, even though that's not the audience that Switch. So really, the argument is that maybe Switch isn't the right platform for Call of Duty because adults aren't really playing Call of Duty that much. By the way, that's neither here nor there. The game sells like 30 million every year. Obviously, it's got a wide spectrum of players, right, from adults to children. So, uh, yeah, there's 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 room for everyone here. But what's interesting about this is as well is some of the insulting things they say. Not only that Nintendo Switch's audience is younger, which isn't factually true based on Nintendo's own reporting. They're basically calling Nintendo a bunch of liars. Uh, that I find that very very interesting. It's also that they're saying things like Switch this and Switch that and talking about Switch and it would take years to make a version compatible for Switch. Not realizing that Switch enters year seven. This deal doesn't kick in until the deal is finalized. The deal was supposed to be finalized in June of next year, which means we probably won't see a Call of Duty until 2024, which then could have been on Nintendo's next platform and that the deal never specifically mentioned Nintendo Switch in the first place. So there's no reason to really even bring up the Switch because you're talking about logically, well logically Nintendo Nintendo's going to have a new platform in the next two years. That's the logic. Don't talk about that because that's where this contract would mostly land. They're basically saying, and, and the one argument that Nintendo doesn't need to worry about equal treatment for its subscription service because those are not areas where it competes aggressively. Nintendo has 35 million NSO subscribers. And guess what you need NSO for? To play games online that aren't free to play so if call of duty comes to switch and you want to play it online you must be a nintendo switch online subscriber so yes getting this game on their platform makes sense now when it comes to talking about well last time call of duty was on switch one call of duty's never been on switch that's already an accurate statement and the last time we saw call of duty on a nintendo platform was call of duty ghosts and call of duty black ops 2 on the Wii U, and the Wii U itself flopped. So being like, oh yeah, it was a commercial flop last time it came over to Nintendo. Yeah, so was the system it was on. How about let's talk about when it was on Wii, and it got every single Call of Duty on Wii, and all of them sold over a million units, some of them over two to three million units. So what are we talking about? That wasn't considered a commercial flop. That's why they kept bringing Call of Duty and making Wii-specific Call of Duty versions of their current games. So. The facts aren't really on your side with this argument. We don't know what Call of Duty would have did on Switch this whole time because we never had it. And to say there's no FPS audience on Switch is weird. Well, this isn't an FPS. Splatoon is a shooter game, and it's massive on Switch. Like, absolutely massive. 15 plus million seller, right? Oh, we have Doom Eternal. I'm sorry. Was Doom and Doom Eternal and the Wolfenstein and Wolfenstein the New Colossus, Wolfenstein 2, like, were these games not supposed to be here? Uh, Sniper Elite, is that game not supposed to be here? We have first-person shooters. Overwatch 2 just came to Switch. I. It's really baffling to me when a company is going this far with their internal emails to insult a company that much. And, and when you see this sort of rhetoric coming from internal, like this isn't about, this has nothing to do with trying to market themselves. These are raw, honest feelings about Nintendo behind the scenes. It makes Sony look like they're actually scared of Nintendo. Maybe even jealous because believe it or not sony does have a lot of money tied up in call of duty it is the number one seller on playstation essentially every year and they get 30 percent of all sales and 30 percent of all dlc revenue so it's a big revenue driver for playstation and they know it and nintendo isn't reliant on that so there could be some jealousy and then also oh and nintendo might get you know one two three million extra sales with extra revenue and maybe an extra million people subscribing to their NSO service. Man, we that's that's not good. So let's find a way to just be like, this is laughable. It won't can't even be on Switch. It's blah 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 blah. Like Sony, stop being scared. And the funny thing is, if that deal's meaningless, you know what's not meaningless? They offered you a 10-year deal. You know, a platform that can run Call of Duty. And you didn't take that deal. So what, what are we even talking about here? Why are you insulting somebody you claim isn't your competition, but clearly they must be if you keep putting their name in your mouth? So whatever. Sony, you keep doing you. Keep being the, uh, I don't I mean, I don't know. Keep being full of yourself. 
Now, that's basically what you come across. And by the way, I'm not even saying this Microsoft acquisition is a good thing. What I'm just saying is the way you're talking about Nintendo and the signing of the deal and how irrelevant this is and tossing aside Nintendo like they're nothing, treating them like they're lower than dirt in the game industry is just baffling. In case you weren't aware, Sony, I know God of War took home a bunch of awards during the Game Awards yesterday, but Nintendo took home five as well and also dropped three major announcements. Nintendo's alive and well. They're not going anywhere. They own your home country in Japan. I don't know. Does, does that matter to you? I don't know. You guys kind of gave up on Japan a long time ago. Oh, and by the way, at the end of this fiscal year, they're going to still be the number one overall selling platform on the MPD report this year in the U.S., despite you being in year two of PS5. I'm just pointing out that Nintendo's incredibly successful right now. Maybe you're a little bit jealous of that success because it's past PS4, but I, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Call of Duty's going to sell on Nintendo's next platform. It's going to sell. It's going to sell in the millions. I don't think it's going to sell the 13, 14, 15 million you guys see, but it's going to sell enough to justify it. And yes, it's going to increase subscription subscribers. You know, the thing that you have to have to play games online on, on Switch. It's just the truth. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.